I also heard that the female, the lioness, bites the male lion's testicles during when she's in heat. Just so you know, I, I saw that. Like if he's not, they're not smashing enough. Is that what I need to do? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Start biting my testicles. I don't know. That's crazy though. Chomp. Fun fact for everyone for Chomp, today. Chomp. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome back, back to Give It To Me Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I am John. And we're, we're your, your gracious, 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 gracious host. John, you can't just throw in an extra one. <laughs> I just curveball, curveball. You're feeling extra fun today. Oh yeah, I'm just full of it. <laughs> full of energy. Well, at least we're not recording this episode at like 9 p.m. I know. I know. It's been a crazy two week. Two weeks? Two weeks. How was Mexico? How was Mexico? We only got off the boat once. <laughs> it was more like our, a working trip. It was a working trip. Yeah. Internet was kind of spotty. So that's the tough thing about going on cruises is like when you're out in the middle of nowhere, there's not great Wi Fi, but it's, it's fine if you want to unplug and you're on vacation. But right. when you're there to work, like it was a working trip for us. So like we couldn't load videos, like the podcast, getting, getting the last episode out for this podcast was a nightmare. I know we like, we're watching the timer tick. It's like, you have five hours and 35 minutes left to upload. And then like the Wi-Fi would go out. I know. And whatever. It worked though. Whatever. I mean, again, you're on a cruise. What do you expect? Yeah. So, yeah. It was uh, nice. We got some sun, some, I mean, fun, it, it some was, fun in the sun. It was a great time. Yeah. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get off in Cabo because we were trying to upload the podcast and do other stuff. That's but, the one spot or stop that I wish we got off at. Cabo. Yeah. Well, where did we see the whales? Like the wildlife that you get to see on cruises, that's the cool part that too. Cool. It's I'm like, not going to butcher the names of these places. I have no idea. No, I just meant like we just saw whales. We saw one morning we were drinking coffee and we saw a mama whale playing with his little baby whale for like his, an hour. Her, her. her baby whale. <laughs> I'm just, well, we're assuming it's the mom. I mean, yeah, do the dad whales play? Canceled. <laughs> <laughs> You're just assuming. You're just assuming. How dare you? Of this whale I'm is. assuming it's the fe- the mom, though, that's with the calf. Sure. That's what they call them. Yeah. If you're wondering. Mm-hmm. But uh, Cruise was cool. Um, and then I got stuck in the slide. Alex tried going down the water slide six times. So we were filming content for Norwegian and we we're like, okay, one of the things that we know that we want to film is the onboard slide. So I was like, I'll bring the GoPro. We'll get some cool shots. Bada bing, bada boom. I meet the guy who's standing to like let you go up the stairs because it's like a steep drop, this slide. And he goes, can't bring your GoPro. And you have to take off all your jewelry, like only you and your bathing suit. And I'm like, damn, how legit is this slide? So I tell John, I'm like, we set up this shot for him to film me coming down the slide. And there's like clear parts. So you could see like where the person who's going down the slide is coming through. And so I give him my stuff. We set up the shot. I'm like, capture me coming through this section. And I see the people going before me and it is just a straight drop. Like you stand on this platform and then the platform disappears underneath your feet and you just go straight down. And I I like always love the, I love like roller coasters. I love all this stuff. So I was like, (laughs) let's Go. What, John? Am I taking nah, too just long? Just get there. You got stuck in the tube. It's just, it's a water slide. We've this all done it. This is why you it's don't a, create. You slide down this the tube. This is why you're not the creative and you don't make the TikToks because you're just, you're boring, John. People want to hear the This story is deeds. fucking boring. You drop down the slide. You got stuck. And you know why you got stuck, Alice? Because you didn't follow directions. You lift your ass up. That's all you have to do. Then no one told me to lift my ass up. They said, bend your, bend your back backwards. I'm <laughs> not... Bring your shoulder blades back and lift your ass up. You're more dense than I am. Like, anyway, let me finish my fucking story. Lifting your ass up. This is my experience. You didn't go down the fucking slide six times. I know. I only needed to go down once. Okay. But the first time, let me tell what happened. So the girl telling me to go, she's like, if you get stuck, someone will let you out. And I'm thinking like, Oh, yeah, of course, someone would let me out, like emergency services. Someone better fucking call 911 if I get stuck, but that's not going to happen. So I go, I'm having a heart attack because it's a straight drop. I get up and then I feel my body start to go backwards. 
And I'm getting like, I'm just, I can't see. There's so much water everywhere. Alex and is I'm waterboarding like, herself. I'm like, oh my God, this is how I die. I'm stuck in this tube and I'm drowning. And I know this is boring for you, John, but this is my experience and my trauma. No, I, okay? would, have, I would have so no, much you didn't, fear. No, you didn't even want me to talk about this. You said, get to the point, Alex. I so want you to talk I'm, about, but get to the point. Yeah, you got stuck. Shut up. This is my <laughs> story. So... What are we only two minutes in? We're already yelling at each other. So I think I'm going to die. I'm having a panic attack. And then all of a sudden this door opens up next to me because I had slid down to like where I couldn't go up. I couldn't go down. I was just stuck. And then a door opens and the girl goes, oh, are you going to try again? And I was my immediately thought my immediate thought was, fuck, no, like, I'm just glad to be alive. And then when the jitters were done, I was like, OK, I, I could do it again. Like, I can make it. I was like, what did I do wrong? And she's like, just keep your like, don't don't. Um, like open your arms out. Like you just have to like keep cross really tight. Legs. Yeah, cross your legs. And I was like, I did all that. Like, I don't know what's wrong with my form, but I think it's just my weight distribution. I was like too long because people who were, you're, were basically the same weight. You just flew, but you're, but you're heavy. I, I had short, I had swim trunks on too. Like your ass was like skin to <laughs> skin, glass. Skin to glass. Which you didn't lift that fat ass. Anyway, up. I'm yeah. just glad. You're looking fat ass, but I might say. People thought that our video, so we posted a video about it where John's just like chilling, drinking a drink, and I get stuck in the slide going backwards. But people thought that we did a boomerang. Like we reversed the video. I was like, no, this is me actually going backwards for the sixth time. <laughs> that was the sixth time, uh, sixth time of you doing it. Like the first time I was just filming you. And when you got stuck, I had like a panic attack. Oh, you had like, a panic attack? I was attack. like, where is she? Where, where is she going? I'm you like, go, oh, that's not good. And then I shut the camera off. But it was a panicked. It was a panic. That's not good. My gosh. I like didn't even, I was so disoriented. But again, the, the Norwegian crew was great. They were trying to give me all the tips and they were super supportive. They were like, try again, try again. But at one point my body was so bruised. Like I have like, like my skin was just peeling off because I kept like banging into the sides. I was done. But I think now next time, one of my friends from high school who worked at Splish Splash, which was like a water park on Long Island, he said shoulder blades and heels like have the least amount of friction. So I was supposed to lift my ass, but no one told me to lift up my ass. And I, you didn't know that. I just naturally did it. Is it? I didn't think it was that hard. Okay, and, so the one thing that you're better at me. At, oh, than, <laughs> that was... That was crazy though. Anyways, talking Anyways. about, I want to go back for a second because you were like, we're already fighting two minutes in. I want to say somebody commented on like one of our videos where we're fighting. They're like, they're going to get divorced. Somebody talked about mental sparring. Did we talk about that last episode? Well, the last episode we talked about us bantering and getting divorced, but we didn't bring up um, the mental sparring part. And I just thought that was such a good, like a, a, that term. Well, I've never heard of it, but it makes so much sense. It's like, we want to challenge each other. Right. It's like when you see, you know, I'm going to compare us to lions. It's like when you see the cool. lions fighting, they still are in the same pack. pack. Yeah. Packed? Pack. 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 Packed. Pack. I also heard that the female, the lioness, bites the male lion's testicles during when she's in heat. Just so you know, I, I saw that. Like if he's not, they're not smashing enough. Is that what I need to do? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Start biting my testicles. I don't know. That's crazy though. <laughs> Chomp. Fun fact for everyone for Chomp, today. Chomp. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was nice to work from the sea, work from the ocean, get some sun. I'm glad to be back though. You know, after traveling, yeah. traveling Agreed. fucks your body up, like your shitting schedule. Actually, my my poop schedule on vacations is usually like not great, but it was fine. We were eating so much like oils. I'm proud of us that we didn't like you know, submerge ourselves in alcohol. I mean, we did have like champagne, but we weren't like going crazy every day. Right. Which was very adult of us. People were going crazy. True. People were going wild. But just traveling in general, like whether it's like getting you getting out of your routine and like working out on a on a ship. By the way, it's a ship, not a boat. I've Correct. been yelled at a couple of times for that. But on the cruise ship, the gym is just so it's so much harder to work out, whether there's rocking or whatever. But anyways, overall, cruise was amazing. One funny thing that happened that was, I feel so bad for this guy. So all the doors are like automatic buttons. Oh my God. We're in the God. lobby. We're in the lobby. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to pee. And normally there's like a light that says like, 
it's a red light that's like the door's locked. It wasn't on. I hit the button and the door automatically opens up and this guy's taking a shit and opens up and there's probably 10 of us waiting in line to speak to the concierge at the desk. And he's like, oh my, oh my God. Like trying to pull his pants. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And the door is pushing open. Like you can't close the door. So I'm like pushing you're, you're against the door. You're going against the hydraulics like, so of the sorry. door. It was so awkward. Then he like gets up and he's trying to like waddle over to the door to close it. You ruined that man's probably whole cruise. He, I he was thinking of that the entire time, I'm sure. Oh, I would have stayed in the room the rest of the, the trip. I felt so bad. Well, what a shit system though, pun intended. Hey. <laughs> is that like, there's no, it says there's like a, a lock button, but that's just for the light. It doesn't actually lock the door. And then you have to wait for the door to fully open and fully close. Like, cause when I was going in those bathrooms, I would just stand there and like wave at the people while I'm like waiting Wait for it for to, the close. Door to close. It's so awkward. I know. You can't push it close. You're just like, there has to be a reason that that's the system on their cruise ship. Like there has to I be a reason. I think it's something to make it like handicap accessible to like wheel in and wheel out. I just, I wonder how many that's, ha I'm sure that's happened on every single, every single excursion or whatever. Whatever. Anyways, enough with the cruise. <laughs> What's, Let's go. Quickies. In you just it. like want to get this over with, John? No. I'm so I, sorry. Just, this is just so a, inconvenient What else do you want to talk about about the you're cruise? Like, what? You, me? You're the one who keeps going with the story. I just, I had it in my notes. Talk about guy I walked in on. I was oh like, I, I remember I wanted to talk about that. That was, and you came back and told me that story. And I was like, this, that you ruined this, this man's man. life. This poor man. <laughs> just his pants halfway up. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and you're like, no, I'm so sorry. I know, I know. I'm so sorry. Okay. Quickie one. Let's dive in. How do you handle a toxic mother-in-law? I've been with my partner for 12 years and have always been proud of my close relationship with her until we got married. She accused me of replacing her in his life, which is crazy. Any advice? I mean, you're not, she's not like a love interest. I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. But like, I think that some moms have like toxic relationships with their sons and literally look at them like they're sons or daughters. It's if you're a helicopter parent and you're so involved, it's no. hard to probably like, no, because there are like moms disengage. who don't have that relationship with their daughters, but they're like, their sons are their prized possessions. Like they're more protective over there. Like, oh, I never want him to love a you girl can, more you, than me. You can, Okay. Maybe. I mean, I've uh, never experienced it, but I think with that well, you're the middle child, so <laughs> I'm also not a boy, so <laughs> I'm not gonna get enough, as much love. I'm just kidding. All right, fine. We won't talk about you know. I think it's the same for female. It's fine. So sons, <laughs> got it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. No, but how does she handle a toxic mother-in-law? There needs to be like a. I saw something on Instagram. Somebody talking about like degrees of separation with in-laws i mean at some point your child needs to leave the nest don't you want your your son or daughter whoever to kind of like grow as a person and if you're just like in their fucking ear no honestly, of, I don't of think course that's gonna... but again like i think it comes down to you're not going to change her you can only change like how you're going to react but i do think at what point your husband is the one who needs to step in and be like, mom, you're fucking crazy. Like, is your husband super close with your, with your mother-in-law? I would like, like to know what he has to say on this. Definitely. Right. If he's, does he not like, is he not aware of it? I know it's probably hard to like be aware of something unless like if you're not an outsider looking in. Were there any red flags before you guys got married with your relationship? I don't know. It sounds like you said you used to be proud of your close relationship with her until you got married. And then she accused you of replacing her in his life. Um, I think, again, that's something where your husband could step forward and be like, mom, that's fucking weird. We have different relationships here. And my wife now takes priority. That's very concerning that she said that. That's like a... She needs to speak to somebody if she thinks that way. Well... Her, what? The mother. But what do you do? You're when, taking my son. No, I know. But like if, let's just say, for example, if your mom said that to me, you think it's my responsibility to be like, you need to talk to someone. No, the son needs to say that. Right. I'm hoping the son is salt, like has enough self-awareness that like this is not okay. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I think the issue lies with your husband here. Next question. 
Okay. My boyfriend yeah. of six months, right? Is there anything no, else yeah. to say there? Well, like, both of them. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to get through these, Someone, John. Someone's the problem. And I'm not doing the conclusion. So next question. My boyfriend of six months has now become comfortable enough to tell me about his tickle fetish. He wants to tie me up and tickle me. The only problem is that I hate being tickled and literally cannot cope with it. I want to keep him happy and turned on, but I just can't face being tickled. Please help. Trick him. Be like, you know how I really get ticklish when my back's rubbed. Oh, yeah. So I'll tie me up. I'll lay down and you just like rub my back, but I'll pretend like you're getting tickled. Because I feel like l even this, even reading this question gives me anxiety of thinking about like, we don't want like you're getting tickled and you can't breathe. You pee, you don't you? What? Don't you pee when you get tickled? <laughs> I peed when well, I got close. tickled. Close. You're like, I'm going to pee say, my pants. I mean, I feel like I just say that to like get you I, off you, of me. I know you peed once. With you? A little, little like. When have I peed my pants? A couple years ago. I was doing your armpits or something and you, you did a little pee. I definitely did not pee my pants when you were tickling like me. A little I peed my pants from being drunk, but not from you tickling me. Did you see me. the video of that, that girl wishing her, her like little sister happy birthday and was like a Barbie down on top of the cake and it looked the cake looked so fucked up and she was laughing hysterically she pissed her pants wait the sister or the, yeah, the i don't know if it's her sister or her mom but she couldn't stop laughing she peed and then the grandmother came in like what's wrong and then she like stepped in the pee you didn't see this <laughs> oh so, so funny um anyway like peeing has nothing to do with this so like <laughs> <laughs> what's the question she doesn't want to get tickled <laughs> She maybe she does pee. We don't know. John, there is a question in here about pee, but I digress. I just think that like you if this isn't something that you want, like there's there's certain things in relationships that might keep your partner turned on, but like that is a non-negotiable for you. Like if if this was something that you were like, This is my fetish, I want to tickle you, I'd be like, go tickle my Elmo. Tickle, Find a tickle tickling me. Tickling my Elmo. insides. <laughs> for her. Somehow you benefit from it. Confuse them, trick them, you know? <laughs> I, not, I don't feel like I could give good advice no, today. you're not making <laughs> sense. You're like, trick them. <laughs> trick them. My back is in my pussy. There's, <laughs> confuse them. No, that doesn't make any sense. How do you know? Like, what do you? If he's like, I have a tickling fetish. He didn't say, where, like, and you're as like, long as you fake it. And he thinks he's tickling you. It probably, he probably gets turned on from it. So it'd be like, <laughs> like why you're getting your back rubbed. Do you know what I'm saying? This is one way to look at it. All right. Or, just or tell him, break up I don't like to get it. fucking tickled. Don't say break up with him. Everyone says <laughs> our advice is break up with him. Yeah. So for now on, but no like, one break up with if anyone. His non-negotiable is like, I need to tickle you to, to finish. I'd be like, then we can't be together. <laughs> And you, That's I, bad again, advice. I would say, uh, buy me a tickle me Elmo. And you're like, tickle my insides. <laughs> like, sure. Trick him. You really got me there. How much did you love him? <laughs> you got to figure it out. I don't know. So uh, we're... Mean, good luck. Zero for two in answering and giving good advice. Okay. Next question. Did you take John's last name? I haven't taken my husband's last name. Not really in a rush to, but I will eventually. He doesn't mind that I haven't or don't plan to anytime soon. It just seems like a lot of work. I will say that it is a lot of work. Oh, I'll definitely say that. I think traditionally, like, yeah, like I'm, I know that's fucked. Like I personally wanted you to take my last name. I think but I did more, but like now because it like was such a headache and it really is not like a big deal. I don't think that I would at the, like if we were to get married now and I still had my old last name, I don't think I would go out of my way to change it. Mm. If but would I got that married again, I'd still have someone probably take my last name. Would <laughs> would that bother you if I, I didn't so. take really? Yeah, because I, think, I so. think when we were getting married, you were like, "Oh, I don't care." But maybe you only said that because like you knew I was taking your last name. I guess. Why? Why does it matter to I you? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I, it just does. I guess like traditionally, like I'm used. Maybe it has to do with like the patriarchy carrying on my last name <laughs> legacy, even though we don't have kids or may not have kids. So I don't really know the point. Hmm. But also, what we've gone through, it's a pain in the ass. Like I'm still, we are still trying to get Alex's last name switched. Now we're in like a middle gray area for TSA, for for well, pre check, no, no, no. Like, all I that got stuff. Pre check in my married name but like my passport's in my maiden name it's just like 
it, it's and a lot. credit cards and the business because I started that and my main and it's just it's not convenient. But I mean, you know, to each their own. I don't. Yeah, to each his own. Whatever works for you. I do think that in. John, also, wait, I want to go back to a second. You were like, if I got married again, I would want her to take. You said you, you would never get married again. I'm not saying I want to, but it, like, if it, <laughs> you were just saying if it happened again. So what are you saying? Uh, just you based get, off of this question. So you, like, no, no, just you, based you off this get question. Married, you want to marry someone else? You always say, John, you're like, if it doesn't work with us, I'm never getting married again. I wouldn't, but no, I'm, but just, like, you I'm would. basing it off this and, question. Like, your wife would change her last name. Like you want another. Mrs. Boof Nasty. Wow, John, I've already <laughs> replaced. I would never. John, my feelings are really me. hurt. I'm sure they are. What if I want you to take my last name? I would never. Your last name's cooler than mine. I do think our our last names, like my I liked my previous last name, but I think that if if you had a super cool last name as like a, a woman, I think you honestly just choose the cooler last name. Like, who do you want your kids to grow up as? Like, my mom's maiden name was Fox. She made the biggest mistake by letting that go. My, yeah, but your dad's last name is fucking cool, too. I know, but my mom's is was cooler. I don't know. They're I don't know. I just think cool. that you should vote for who has the cooler last name and go with that. Or just keep your own. Whatever you want. But I, I'm telling you now, it is a fucking bitch. So, next question. I'm not going to say in conclusion, but I have something to add to that. I just feel like they don't make it easy. Like if married couples are going to get this same last name, they need to make it easier somehow in the United States to do that because it is so complicated. The amount of like hoops you have to go through and the different things you have to do when you switch your last name. Like I don't, I don't understand. There that. is like, I know when you get married, sometimes people give this as a gift. It's like a marriage name changing service where basically it has all the paperwork, all the filings that you're going to have to do. You just fill it out and they do it for you. I mean, That's, you, that is an amazing service. Then I, I, yeah, I but know I don't that. know. I don't remember what it's called, but that does exist. Um, mm. We didn't do it, of course, because we do things the hard way. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Next question. I've never had sex and I'm in my mid twenties. I grew up in a very sheltered environment and it's just something I've been too nervous about doing. I feel embarrassed and some amount of shame. So that stops me from making any moves. I go to therapy, which has been very helpful, but I'd love some advice, opinions, et cetera, on how to go about this. What's your, you know, are you like this because of religious reasons? Well, I was just going to say like, what is the reason? Like, right. Was it originally for religion, religious purposes, or is it just because you haven't found the right person yet? Like, is there a reason why you were waiting um, but it's never too late. And I do think that like, now you have to say like, am I willing to lose it to whoever? Does it matter? Or do you want to lose it to someone who you care about, you know, or love? Like, what are your, standards? whatever you choose to do, like, you know, just be happy with your decision. I feel like don't let any outside source dictate your body and what you want to do. And, you know, like, if you want to wait, we know people who waited till marriage too. And like, that's fine. Or no, but I don't think that they want to anymore. I think that now they're just like, it's, they're in their mid twenties. They're embarrassed. I mean, I just, I think that whoever you're with, like number one, if you don't care who you lose it to, like you don't even have to tell them, like just go fucking do it. Like also just, there's no, like you're probably more nervous than the other person would even like recognize. Cause I think that sometimes you're like, Oh my God, it's been this long. How can I even like go about this now without it being a big deal? Because it's built up in your head as something that's so big, but it's really not like, it doesn't have to be, it is what you want it to be. If you want it to be special with someone who you love, let it be that. If you want it to just be something that you lose because you just want to get it over with, let it be that. Well said. I, I agree. I don't like, I don't think I have much else to say on that. That makes so much sense. It's like whatever you're comfortable with doing. Right. I don't want to say like, don't make it a big deal. Cause it, but it is a big deal. You say it's, you can make it a big deal or not make it a big deal. Like your first time is still a big deal. John, whenever I say, how'd you lose your virginity? You go, I don't remember, but it was a big time, but it was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't fully remember. <laughs> but it's different for everyone. John, how did you lose no, it? No, I don't fully remember. No, no, no. Yes, you do. Why? Like, 
Like, is is it because it was with the one that got away? It's just like traumatic for you to talk about? No. <laughs> I don't know if it like fully counts or not. It's like a couple and then we like stopped. Like, mm, maybe not. Oh, so you do remember. You're just like, you're not sure if that was your first time. Yeah. Is that how? <laughs> Guys, I've had shots so many times. I don't know times. if that counts or not. So you just, you've never been sure if that was your first time or, or not. Or the first time was like with like no, the I first think love, you P, know? No, P and V is your first time and guys i've asked john this question i'm like how'd you lose your virginity he's like i don't remember maybe in my head I, I, maybe in my head i want to be like it was with like my first love you know and make no make it seem no. like so. yeah i'm gonna say that no it seems special if you put your penis in someone's vagina <laughs> you lost your virginity like you know what i'm not gonna ask, like, i don't want to know about yours well i was a born again virgin right after that that's and right <laughs> uh -huh, man. So that's not how this works. Uh, so yeah, make it special. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just think... You know what I'm not asking you? It, uh, what's yours? When was yours? See, you've never asked me because I ask you all the questions in life. You don't care about me, John. I do care. I just... Not about the, not about that. All right. Well, but now I want to know. Moving no, on. no, no. Now I want to know. I lost it to my first boyfriend. Oh, See, so yours was... Was it... Yeah, but I didn't... Was it important to you? I mean, looking back now, I'm like, like it, it, it seemed like such a big deal at the time, of course, but like, I don't know. It's do you just, still, do you think you'd still have that same feeling if you were losing your virginity in your late twenties? No, in my late twenties, I would definitely have anxiety about it. Like, I, I feel like I would be like, what is this mysterious thing that I haven't done yet that do I you feel think like you'd I should have done? you same feelings though, as you would when it was back in like high school or whenever. What do you mean feelings? I don't know. Like the rush of endorphins and you know you going through your teen years of puberty and hormones and all that stuff do you feel like it'd be as hyped up i mean i think i lost it because i was in a relationship and i literally was like oh this is my first boyfriend of course i'm gonna marry this person <laughs> like but that was a very naive like way of thinking Cause like you generally don't, some people do marry their first boyfriend, but like you generally don't. <laughs> and so I don't know. That's why I just think that like you build it up in your head that it's a bigger deal than it is. And like you said, to your point, of course it's a special thing, but it is what you make it. Like you don't have to be stressed about it. Like you just got to rip the bandaid off. Like, and that's why you have to decide, does it matter who it want? Like, does it matter who it's with? Like if you want it to be with someone special that you have an, a relationship with and that you have an emotional connection with, then it's going to take a little bit more time than just like swiping right on Tinder and being like, let's just fucking do it. Yeah. Okay. Leave it at that. Figure out, figure out what's your priority. Right but there. don't be scared. Like it's, it's not don't that be scary. Scared. <laughs> Maybe watch like, and again, I'm not comparing you to 40 year old virgin. You still have some time, but I do think that that movie might give you some good insight into, you know, what, you could do. I can't believe you just referenced 40 year old virgin as like the reference she should no, use. No, no, it also might be a guy. Oh, it could be. It didn't say, but I just think, and again, not that you're in your forties, but do you I think, think that's like, different. Wow. There's, it might be a guy. I didn't know that. So we don't, we're going to move on, but do you think those are two totally separate things? If it's from a female's perspective compared to a male's perspective? No. Because think about like, I think a girl can have anxiety about it and a guy could have anxiety about it. Like, Think about if you right. were in your mid twenties and you hadn't lost your virginity yet, and then yeah. you'd probably be anxious. I don't know why I'm com I don't know why I'm comparing it to like weddings. The reason I'm saying that it's like it's such a big deal to women, like weddings, definitely more than men. You mean oh. planning a wedding or having a wedding having, or waiting like, until weddings your wedding? are like a pivotal moment in a woman's life to get married compared to a man's, and I'm, I'll die on that hill because the guy's like whatever, most of us. I was going to say. So I'm thinking like virginity, like losing it to your love. Is it more of like. Well, apparently it's that important to you because you don't even remember the first time as you lose your virginity. <laughs> you know? It's just in and out a few times. Does you know that what? count? Let's yes. go to the next question. John, it's a, it was special. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> All right. I don't know how to feel slash confront my sister-in-law flirting with my ex. My ex is in my immediate friend group. 
and we are a pretty tight group. We dated for a few months in high school, and I know that's a long time ago, but personally, it just sits weird with me that my sister-in-law is asking my ex to fuck her, especially since she has a boyfriend of a year. Just give it to me straight. Am I crazy to feel some type of way, or should I let her continue throwing herself at him? I'm having a hard time processing this. Your sister-in-law, so of, I'm assuming, another sibling? No, so her... Um, oh, that's true. It could be her sister-in-law from another sibling it's or like hurts my brain. her like, husband's. No, because she's she broke up or she wasn't divorced. It says. No, the girl writing in, she could be married and her sister-in-law could be her husband's sister or this. It could be her. Oh, sibling. like this is a previous person. So she's talking about like her ex before her husband. Or before, or before her brother or sister's husband, her ex, whatever, her sister-in-law, however it is related, is flirting with her ex. Or is it an ex-sister-in-law? No. Okay, so it's a sister-in-law. How so do I confront my sister-in-law flirting with my ex? Jesus. Yeah, that's so, fucked up. No, but see, fucked up, I don't think so. Because she goes, we dated for a few months in high school. And like your sister-in-law's flirting with your ex, like... Oh, wait a minute. But if you're... So you are married. You must be married. So you shouldn't care because you're married. If like you're that, married... You need to close that chapter who, in your life. Right. If you're married, if this is your sister-in-law, like your husband's sister, you no. You don't have... You don't... Get, like... And if this was like an ex-ex-boyfriend that like you loved, you were with for years, it was after high school, like a more serious relationship, but you dated for a few months in high school, like... I'm not going to lie. It shouldn't matter either way because if you are married and you are in a committed relationship, no, 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 but, no you need to close that door. Yeah, but, okay, you could close that door, but I do think that exes should be off limits to a point. Like, I think that exes, serious relationships that you had of exes should be off limits to like your close family and friends. But I think a high school boyfriend that you had for a few months, like, did that really mean anything? I think you have to actually look, dive a little deeper into what you're mad about. Are you mad because you still have feelings for this guy and you're jealous? Or are you just mad because you feel like your sister-in-law is your family and it's a traitorous thing for her to do? Because I think those two are separate. Two separate feelings. Like, I get if you're just like, you know what? Fuck you because you're supposed to be like in my clan now and you're doing something like that. Or are you like... Um, like well, I wish also, that, she's saying her sister-in-law has a boyfriend. So this is that's very irre that's irrelevant. That layered. Part, that part's irrelevant. Is it? Yeah, that is irrelevant because that has nothing to do with you. Look, you, you're you upset. Why are you actually upset? You need to know that. Because if it is like you're jealous and you might have slight feelings, then like that's a bigger problem. But right. if you're just mad at her because it's kind of traitorous, traitorous of her. I don't know if that's a word. If, if she's, she's a, traitor a traitor to you, that's what you're mad about, then... I think those feelings are valid. But that's why I don't think that she has the right to feel like her sister-in-law is being a traitor because this was a boyfriend from high school that you dated for a few months. Like, cool. Traitor. So you, I, I just feel like that's- but, but that's what I'd be mad about. I wouldn't be mad about the relationship part. I'm separating the two. I'm just like, we are family, we're a clan, and you're, and you're going over me into like dangerous waters. You know what I'm saying? If it was a serious ex, then sure. But like, I don't know. And also I just feel like, again, and we don't know if this is your siblings, <laughs> like how this is your sister-in-law from like a sibling's the dynamic relationship we're confused about. or your husband. Cause again, it does change it. Like if it's your husband, then like you, you really don't get a say. But again, I do understand where like you're annoyed that she's going for your sloppy seconds. But I also think that like this was a stupid relationship in high school that like get over it, grow up. That too. But you're also allowed to be annoyed at her that she has a boyfriend. But at the same time, it just sounds I, like your sister-in-law. That part's so fucking Why? Around. Because it's like she's now cheating on her boyfriend. With Unless her boyfriend is one of your friends or a family member like... That it's irrelevant to what your feelings are in this situation. So do you think that she should say something? Yeah. What would she say? Why are you talking to my ex-boyfriend? 
Don't you think that's a little weird? How do you think that's going to affect me? How do you think that's going to affect our family dynamic? Do you think about anyone else but yourself? There's so many fucking questions you can ask. And that was just know. off the fly there. I think, again, if this was like a more serious ex that you dated for years outside of high school, sure. I, then I would feel some type of way too. But I'm still stuck on the fact that like you only dated him for a couple of months in high school. Like, get over it. All right. Agree to disagree. Next like question. You're, you're old. Like people, if it's a Did small- you say you're old? No, no, no. Like you're older now. Like if oh. you're in a small type group <laughs> like of people, people date one another. Like we do, like we're not- as close like with a huge group from high school but we know people who who are and i feel like in those groups everyone has had some it's like a web yeah. yeah and like of of course because you've known each other since middle school high school elementary school like there's been some but it doesn't mean that it was serious so i just think that like don't get caught up on the fact that he's your ex like from high school like i would i would be more concerned we got it alex know. go next question next question you almost got through the questions without a fucking conclusion next question is this big questions or small now questions? we're in big questions so i'm getting back on the dating scene but i have genital warts and have no idea who or when i from who or when i got them how do i bring this up or do i just play russian roulette as most guys have never asked me if i'm clean do I just play the whole, it's not lying, it's just not mentioning it unless you ask? I won't have sex with anyone bare while I have an outbreak or until I've told them and they decide. But what are your thoughts? I want to do the right thing, but even my doctor says that there's some gray area about bringing it up. What does your doctor say? I know. What's the gray area? I don't know. I would Is he be, like, well, I'd, if you're not having a flare-up, you should be okay not giving it to, transmitting it to somebody else? I just think that this is one of those situations that like, I'm sorry that this happened to you, but honesty is the best policy. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? I don't know. We might have to fact check this. I was a therapist. I'm not can, a, can you get like arrested for going out and spreading things? If you're not like, if you I know that one guy you know, did who was like spreading AIDS to people. But right. Like, is that not? I don't know. I mean, that is a, a crime in some way. Like you knowingly spreading around and not informing I mean, it, if it's not a crime, then like it's just a crime. If it's something to your that's morals. uncurable, I'm assuming so. Like if it's gonorrhea or something like that, like you can get rid of that. But if it's an uncurable, and that disease, also might be very like extreme for me to like call it a crime. But I just don't think it's like morally <clears throat> right. No, you're affecting someone else's life. Like that can wreck some people. I get like where y this is like super fucking uncomfortable for of you. Like and of not a conversation that you want to start having with someone, but that's why I feel like now moving forward, you're just going to have to be really particular about who you have relationships with, like, and when you're ready to have that conversation with them. But I don't think the route is to not say anything is to just sleep with people. And I mean, I have a guilty conscience that would eat me alive. Mm -hmm. So, but I want to say, I know that's very tough for you. I think there's actually Groups. Well, there's groups, but there's dating sites. I think it's called like positive or something. And the people that are like positive for certain things, maybe it's like more of an open discussion, right. but like that's a dating scene there where it's like you guys could discuss and disclose what you guys have. Right. And like go get tested together and know exactly where you're at. And that's not to say again, like you're not going to find anyone who's like now also not positive True. for something. But I think that like starting off a relationship lying, you're... You, if, if someone finds out then that you didn't tell them and then later on, like, it's only going to start problems. Like, you need to be honest from the start, like, before you're intimate with one another. Like, again, I don't think it's a first date conversation, second date, but, like, prior to being intimate with a person. And if someone is not okay with that and, like, they choose to not date you, like, this isn't someone you want to be with anyway. Like, if you can explain to them that maybe they won't get infected unless it's a flare-up, like, I don't know what the details are, but... I think you just have to be honest at the end of the day. I think rejection is tough and you're, ha you're opening up to, I mean, potentially a stranger. If you're, if it's before you're intimate with somebody, I'm assuming it's almost like a stranger and to have to say something like, I mean, it takes a lot of courage, but I think that's the right thing to do. Right. In law question, my wife hates her parents. She goes back and forth between cutting them off completely and hanging out with them regularly. 
She has certainly endured some trauma from them as a child, which I think clouds her ability to see anything good about the relationship. I really believe that they want a healthy relationship at this point, and I have voiced that I think she should set more clear boundaries versus a complete cutoff. But overall, I told her that whatever she thinks is best for her. Our kid is one and a half, and they are getting older, and for some reason, the thought of our daughter asking who they are makes me embarrassed to have that conversation. The way she is handling it makes me so uncomfortable. Do I need to just shut the fuck up and stay out of it? Or is it acceptable acceptable for me to voice how I feel? I never want her to think that I'm on their side. And that's really the most important thing for me. It seems like you're you're very aware of what's going on. It seems like you guys would have good communication or you already do. I, mm-hmm. I think you obviously talked to her about it because it's not just the two of you. It's your child. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to know the grandparents, if they are good, it's good for structure. I'm assuming, you know, I knew my grandparents, you knew yours. Yeah. But I do think that like, if it's a toxic relationship that where it's like too toxic for her, his wife, like, I don't think it matters for well, the grandkid. Kinda, I think he's leaning towards, is she the one making it more toxic now? Than no, the I think he's, he's basically just saying like, she's figuring out what she wants to do. Where should he stand in it like do i just shut the fuck up and stay out I mean, of it it kind of depends on what's the trauma i think uh, yeah like it, is were it they something abusive were they physical it, verbal is it something that is going to impact your daughter like is it a situation that like you wouldn't want your daughter around but also therapy like have your wife like maybe if you go together just to kind of like navigate what this relationship looks like because i don't think that just because they're her parents like they have a right to her you know what i mean like I think that you have every right to cut off people in your life who don't serve you any longer or or who are not supportive or who have hurt you, you know, like, and I think that you should cut your daughter, like you should be protective of your daughter from that as well. I think um, you do have a say though, because it is your daughter too. So I think verbalizing, expressing how you feel about it. We, again, we don't know the situation. And like, fully. what's your relationship like with her parents? Like, do you think that they are a healthy influence you know, because it seems like he said, my wife is trying to figure out the kind of relationship she wants to have with her parents. Mm-hmm. She goes between hanging out with them regularly and cutting them off. Right. I think there's a way to kind of like slowly, you know, integrate the grandparents into like you could just bring your child to go visit them without the mom. I mean, just figure out if she's OK with that first. But like she if you guys agree with that, she doesn't actually have to be around at first, though, to kind of like. Right. I do. I mean, I think at the end of the day, though, like you do have to do what's best for your wife. Like if your wife feels and she just has to make a decision, you know what I mean? Like because it can be confusing for your daughter and like if it is back and forth. And I think that things can change. But like over time, when people change and grow and learn. But I think that at this point, you have to or your wife has to make the decision based off their relationship now and what she wants you know her relationship she needs to figure that out but she needs to make a decision right now about her daughter or son's relationship with the grandparents like she can separate those two whether she gets along with her gra- her parents or not it's like well that's why you- again it's very great because it's like what what's the reason what is the reason right you know but i do think that yes you have a say to a point but you do just have to be supportive of your wife and whatever she decides i think agree next question My boyfriend and I are in a long distance relationship. He lives in Pittsburgh and I live in Boston. He asked me to move to Pittsburgh and I will be looking at apartments in a few weeks when I visit him next. The original plan was that he would move to Boston for a year, but when the time came for us to settle down, we'd move to Pittsburgh. However, the plan changed after looking into apartments. He said, Boston is too expensive. From a guy's perspective, would you say it's a red flag that he isn't moving to Boston because of money? He mentioned he wouldn't have a career here, but with me moving to Pittsburgh, I'll have to start over there career-wise. I'm ecstatic to be I'm ecstatic to be taking the next step with him, but I'm looking for some reassurance that I'm not wearing rose-colored glasses and him staying in Boston is too expensive is a reasonable is reasonable for him to not move here. Does that make sense? I feel like that's right. kind of confusing. I think her being cautious is smart. Um I think you both need to look at like can he if you're starting over completely, like would he be starting over completely if he moved to you financially? Is it that big of a difference between the two places for rent? I mean, there's a lot of different things you need to look at financially. I mean, if he can't afford an apartment there, he can't afford an apartment there. Like that's, 
kind of irrelevant. Like, I mean, I, I get where she's coming from, though, where she's like, well, the original plan was for him to move here for a year and then we'll go to Pittsburgh to settle down. And now he's kind of like, well, it's too expensive. So just come right. here. Is, I would say, call him off if it's <clears throat> bullshit or not. Is it really a financial reason? Right. Like maybe truly run the numbers with him and make it work. Because I think sometimes it is overwhelming for people and they do think that moving is a big cost because it is expensive to move. But I think that once you actually run the numbers and explain it, um, but if it is actually for money, you can't, you can't blame someone for making a correct financial decision or like doing what's best for them. Right. But if it's just a fucking cop out, then, yeah. then there's bigger issues. Exactly. I think finding out the reason. Yeah. Like, cause that'd be kind of fucked up if he's just like, eh, I don't really feel like moving there. You move to me. I'm like, come on. Run those numbers, girl. Yeah. Run those numbers. <laughs> Next question. My husband's brother wants to visit us this summer, but he has a serious drinking problem that leads to peeing in the bed. He is almost 50 years old and cannot control his drinking. He stayed with us a few years ago, and after he left, I found a urine stain on the mattress. He did not even have the courtesy to mention it, offer to do the sheets, or anything. He just left it behind for us to find. I've been very upfront with my husband that I do not want him to stay in our house ever again, but he's protective of his big brother. I understand the brother may be embarrassed and frankly, he should be at 50 if this happens all the time at home. Do I call him out myself before he stays with us? Should I get cheap sheets and a plastic liner for the bed? Or do I just hope that my husband can confront his brother? Appreciate any advice on this one. No. No, <laughs> no what? No. You're in your 50s. You're pissing the bed. College, I was the bed peer, except I never peed in a bed, but like, I, I something was once. a bed peer once. But like I, it was when I was, I would get blackout and think I was peeing on a toilet, but I'd pee on a chair. I'd pee on a couch. And there were people like that. It wasn't just me. It doesn't excuse the behavior, but like, it's a problem. And like when you're in your twenties, early twenties, like it's, it's funny. It's no, it's not, it's fucking annoying. But funny for who? <laughs> funny to Is it funny for funny you for because your friends. I can to tell make you that it's not you. funny for the person who owns that furniture. <laughs> I'm sure. Exactly. But like when you're 50, it's not fucking cute and it's not funny and it is a problem. And like, so I feel like him just like peeing in your house and in your bed is not just him, it's his drinking issue. It's a respect thing. And your husband has to be the one to confront his brother about that. I barely want people to visit me that are normal. Okay. <laughs> this is my environment. Right. This is my safe zone. This is what I like. This is my sanctuary. Now you're bringing someone in who already has a fucking issue. Like, no, absolutely not. I agree fully with you. Tell your husband it's me or him. So, <laughs> The thing too is I know that you're like, I don't want to embarrass him. I would a hundred percent. That's like, you know how like they say this sometimes Airbnb. shaming, shame. And not that this is like a healthy shame, way. Shame shame, shame, shame. I don't think that this, this is healthy or would be maybe recommended by an actual person who knows what they're talking about. But what would make me change is someone calling me the fuck out and being like, you can't come over. I'm sure the last at 50 time, years old, he's been called out. You think? Yes. But I mean, she said that they didn't. They just like clean the sheets. They he just they clean the bed. Like, let's just simplify this. I think we both agree. No to him staying with you. Absolutely not. I would lose my mind. You need to speak to your husband and be like, "I'm priority. Yeah. I'm your wife. This is we share this space. This isn't just your space. This is our space. So we need to figure out. Put him in the fucking garage. I don't know. Like you, you have your he own can sleep space. outside. Help him pay for an Airbnb if you can. I don't. I don't know. Well, and that's but what it's it not is on too. you to have right. to like you know, take care accommodate yes. to your husband's inconvenient, immature brother. Like if he, it listen, first off, also we know alcoholism is, is it a mental? Well, no, like, I mean, we don't know, it's, but like it's, it's challenging. It, it's, it's an it's issue a, that people need to be, you know, I'm not accommodating towards, but like, I know it's People hard. People are sensitive about it. It's like a sensitive topic. I mean, it's again, mental health issues. Like there's so many layers that go into alcoholism. Again, like, uh, like I had a drinking problem. <laughs> like there's just, I just think though that like, this is, this shouldn't now 
like affect and impact your life and your peace. You know, if he wants to stay at a hotel, that's fine. Pee on those sheets. Like he needs to deal with his problems, but you don't have to now be the bearer of, or be the brunt of that. And I think it's on your husband to really stand up for you in this situation. Yeah. I feel like we were a little rude there, but I just want to say your feelings are valid I understand your husband's well, feelings for being valid too, because it is his blood. It's his brother. Okay. But it shouldn't be on you guys to have to baby him, baby him or take care of an adult. Right. Male. Like lock who, it up. <laughs> if he's having those issues, it shouldn't be coming to you guys first. He needs to go seek like help. Mm-hmm. We'll need help. Everyone needs help. Okay. Enough with that. <laughs> Let's talk and say that. I, I just mean, didn't want to end it sounding like a complete asshole. No, being no, like, no, I mean, but we've talked about valid. we've talked about drinking before, and again, like it is a sensitive topic, and it is a problem. It can ruin lives. It can ruin people. But her, his, your brother in law is the one that has to change. Like you, you can accommodate to his needs if you want, but I don't think that you have to, especially if it's our, if it's going to cause a problem. Like. It sounds like it has caused a problem and it's something that like you don't want to have to deal with and you shouldn't have to deal with. Like, do not feel bad for setting this boundary because of someone's inability to take care of themselves. Being for someone even like, I mean, the fact that he's staying with them is a whole nother. Right. Like that's compared to like you just being there for someone outside of your own home where mm-hmm. you live, like being there for someone is like that's supporting a lot. him right. in his journey to getting help outside of him staying with you. If he even you. wants it, we're saying that's he wants it. We don't even know what the fuck that's this guy wants. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. he needs, like he might not even want help. And so he just is drinking and peeing everywhere. Obviously being embarrassed is not changing him. I guess it does. I don't know. I don't, he might not have been called out. That's why I think that like you should be like, hey, no, the last time you um, peed the bed, and or okay, like, hey, I put plastic sheets on. The yeah, I was just gonna say, like, yeah, we um got you a blow up mattress outside, right. but I don't know. I think again, just have that conversation with your husband. Next question: I've been with my girlfriend throughout the pandemic, and we've started prepping for the next step. I got the ring, and I've prepped the proposal, but I have this nagging fear that this relationship is doomed to fail. We're fighting more often than we're not. We're still in the city that neither of us want to be in, provided we're here because of her career, which I'm extremely supportive of. But these fights lately have cut me so deep and I can't help but feel like we're destined for a messy and terrible divorce. Is this just pre-engagement slash marriage jitters? I don't want to hurt her because I do love her, but it's been more and more difficult to be with her the longer their relationship has been going. There's so many different factors. I don't know. Are you guys getting more comfortable with each other and like real personalities are coming out. It could be stress. You guys seem like you have a lot going on. I know when Alex and I are stressed, we kind of like butt heads a little bit. And I know too, for us, like the year that we got married, I feel like we were fighting so much too. Like we were building a business. We were living in my grandma's basement. We were working seven days a week. We were drinking, putting together, a lot. Yeah, drinking a lot. We were trying to like scrounge up all the money we could to try to buy a house, pay for the wedding. Like there was a lot of factors. Um, so I think it's ultimately assessing what are you arguing about and like what like what is this where is this stemming from? I don't think it has to be doomed, but is it is it? A- I can see why though you're nervous because it's you're constantly fighting. So all you're looking at and thinking about is the negative right now. You're like, is this the rest of my life? Are we going to be butting heads constantly? So you could also try premarital counseling, like. Give it a shot. People do it. Like, there's a reason. It's because you also do People tackle those. People also do it for not. No, like, you, did uh, your brother do it just to like? Um, um, I don't know if my brother was it went counseling but, or was it like a? Well, I think what is it called? Precana, like in the Catholic. When you're getting married in a Catholic church, like you have to go to like it's essentially premarital meetings. That's because if you get you get to have your wedding for free in the church. No, it's still not for free. Discount. I don't. Anyway, the ceremony. If you're getting married in a Catholic <laughs> church, I think you have to go to premarital like meetings. I think it's called precana. I don't know. But either way, you don't have to go just because you're arguing. People go when they're in healthy relationships, but it's just also to kind of set a standard of the conversations that you might not have had before. And it might help you 
get to the answer that you're looking for. Like, is this, is this going to work for us? Like, is this a relationship that I do want to pursue moving forward? Because I think when it is pre wedding, pre engagement, like it, you can get clouded by the stress of that, that you're like, well, wait a minute, maybe I hate this person. Right. It's also, you have to go to confession too. Have now you think, ever? Now I'm thinking about it. Yes, because I, because I <clears throat> feel like I looked into it to get married in a Catholic church. From wasn't this why we didn't want to do that there John, either? Though we were. I'm going to call this bullshit. Who gonna, is? Who are you looking at getting married in a Catholic church? Because it was not me. I was my it, parents got married? Was in it Catholic your church. the girl who you lost? No, your yeah, that's it. <laughs> I thought you had to do confirm or uh, you have to do what's that? What did communion? I just, no confirmation. I'm Catholic. I'm so bad at this. No, when you have to confess your sins, I just said it. Confessionals. This, <laughs> conf- what is this, road rules? Confessionals? I just said it started with an R. I thought you had to do that in order to... No, fuck. <laughs> it's not confirmation. It's not communion. We're just going to call it confessionals. That, I'm pretty sure that's not what it's called. But you have to like go and confess your sins and stuff in order to like be clear to have your wedding in the church. Moving on, because it's irrelevant, but I feel like that's why that's what you have to do to get married in a Catholic church. Keep going. We should honestly should just ask your cousin. Now I need to know. Now it's bothering they, me. They they didn't go to confessionals. They just went to like premarital <laughs> meetings. <It's not> confessionals. <laughs> like I don't know, John. But anyway, I think that maybe a premarital confessional counseling oh my God. would work um, or just really having like that sit down conversation with your future fiance and just being like, is this, are we happy? Right. Are we both happy? I don't know. I'm so flustered by wanting to remember what that word was. Well, that's Next it, John. Question. I do have a bonus question. Bonus question. Okay. All right. Bonus question. I love that you both call out each other's icks in every episode and I got to throw out my own ick about my partner. Love him to death, but he almost never uses turn signals when we drive together in the car, and I don't know how to be blissfully unaware about it. He is the driver that we all cannot stand on the road, and every time he comes to an almost full stop before turning with no turn signal. You I fucking sink drive. In you my drive. Seat, hoping that the person behind us knows how I feel for them. Is this a conversation worth having, or do you just drive separately everywhere to protect your peace? Why separately? Why why is that the next step? Why don't you, you fucking drive? No, or you if say- If you're going to be a turn, backseat driver, you drive. Oh, so you think that she shouldn't say anything? You're like, this I mean, guy's she can, fine she driving. She can, but like, if he's the one being courteous enough to drive, why don't you fucking drive? Oh, so you think it's like he's being so great and driving, like don't come at his driving skills. Like he could be hitting children. Unless and you're he's like, like, well, he's I'm, just nice that he's driving. Listen, unless he's like- in these gender roles of like, I'm the man, I need to drive, like then call him on his shit. But if he's just c- being courteous and driving you. But he's not being courteous to everyone else on the road. Use your fucking blinker. You fucking drive. Don't complain about someone else's driving when you're able to drive too. Why so, are you driving? So you don't care about, you think the blinker thing's like whatever. You're like, whatever. No, you use your blinker. Okay. But like, I don't think you have the right to complain about it unless you offer to drive. So you're saying the solution is don't say shit to him. You just get your ass in the driver's seat. But what if he's like, no, I'm driving. Then, oh, then you fucking call him out on it. Okay. Yeah, so that, wh- that's different. I need to know more. This is like annoying to me because I'd be like, where do you, like, you could be driving. Well, yeah. And then I would be maybe like, well, I, and then maybe I will if, drive. Maybe like if this was you and you weren't using your blinker, I would be like. You never drive ever. I know. You but never, if you weren't using drive. your blinker and I knew, like whenever you drive slow in the maybe left lane. Maybe when we go to the bar like once you drive. When you drive slow drive. in the left lane and I notice and like, cause John's a grandpa, I'm like, get the fuck out of the, the, been in the, car the fast today. lane. I only drive slow cause you're precious cargo. That's a lie. When we were like driving to weddings and we would be like on the LIE going to New Jersey. I'm like, get out of the left lane. Oh, and so you're a terrible driver. First off. I'm away did you not see me on the speed track on Alex norwegian a, john i came in car. first place you have hit every curve you just hit a curve that's my ex we're transitioning into x i'm gonna say my first ick you hit a curve alex you yeah. mother effer blah, 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 blah. No. my name's john i hit curves <laughs> my ick we go to a restaurant yesterday 
And Alex is always like, you're parked too far away from the curb. You're parked too far away from the curb. Because <laughs> ever so since then John she's looking out the window. Ever since John hit a curb, you literally park this far. And I'm like, our car is going to get hit because you're parked a foot away because you're afraid it's of hitting the egg. curb. So Alex is like looking out the window. She's like, yeah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Grr, I just slammed the rim into the sidewalk. I couldn't. You're the one on the side where the curb was. Like no, you couldn't give I me couldn't better tell. directions. So it I was, fucked the it rim was up. It like on an angle. And so... Like, and why are you listening to me? You're on that side <laughs> of the car. It's like, can't. John, you like blame other people for your problems. Be a better driver. You should have known. That was Be a, a test. better driver. Yeah. Like you should have known. That was a test. Uh, I will <laughs> rip your soul out. You're not a good driver. You've I'm such a things. better driver than you. No, you're not. Yeah. I, I, John, I came, yeah. In, I came in first place. On the speed track for a reason. It's because I'm oh, a good driver. I was on the cruise, by the way. We had to get shots of her like driving um, on the go karts or whatever they're called. And I can hear her in front of me slamming her brakes so, on. Because they told me I wasn't allowed to bump into the people in front of me. They so were I'm, slow. They should have got over. Right. And you've, they did. So they stopped the whole race and told the lady in front of me, lady, move over. Because I kept trying to pass her. But she kept like, loo, 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 loo. I was like, I'm I have like, the need for speed. I have one more it because this is funny. I'm oh thinking my about God, it. John. It's about the cruise. Hibachi. Oh. You know, I'm just, just like, so I'm not a fan of Hibachi. I hate like the song. The first time's cool, but after that, like the song and the well, dance we, and all that. That's I'm not like, I just, want we just need to not go. No, everyone wanted to go but me. I did not want to go. And then what made it worse was Cam, our friend, was like, you guys are going to special occasions? And Cam's like, it's his birthday. <laughs> and ever since I was a kid, like I get so embarrassed when like direct attention is on me like that for Come some on. reason. Yeah. You deep down, you love it. Ask, ask, ask my mother. My sister or my dad, I would cry for happy birthday. So it was like <laughs> them, and it's not even my birthday. I have such guilty conscience. And they're like singing me happy birthday. And he's got the, and then he starts throwing me pieces of egg. And I had like five pieces <laughs> of egg I'm trying to catch in my mouth. <laughs> I was just annoyed. So is your ick just hibachi in general? Happy birthday, a lie, living a lie of happy birthday. It wasn't my birthday. So is that your ick, living a that lie? That and hibachi. You've had like so six icks today. Three. three. Okay. I wanted to get those out before you cut me off and told your ick. You know what, John? I don't have an ick because I just. You have an ick. You what is are ick? just the best. I am a better. My ick is that like I know that I'm a better driver than you. Like I should have. I think I really missed my calling of getting into NASCAR. Like when I was driving and I was in first place, I was like. I'm winning. Alex, the go karts were going laughing. like 10 miles an hour. You're, and, not, and John, you're not a fucking pro. They were pro. going 10 miles for an hour for who? All of us. And who you won? started in front of me. me. You started in front of me. No, I can't go any faster. One br- and I also started in the back. There was six people in front of us. And I still won. You passed two people. I won. John, you're just bitter that I'm a better okay. driver than you. Okay. Anyway, my ick. It's not really an ick. It's just like a, an, a, a like awareness thing. It's like you complain. You're like, I don't like anyone. No, I, I don't like people. I don't like anyone. But then we walk through, through the gym And you have friends everywhere. People who like work there, people who work out there. We don't know each other's names or anything. We're just like, hey, bro, we walk through and you're Mr. Besties with everyone. You're like, I don't like people. And I'm like, oh, really? Because you have somehow made all the friends here. You're like, sup, bro? How's the wife? (laughs) How's the kids? Don't talk like that. (laughs) How's the dog? How's the wife? How's it going? Looking good, bro. Sweet. Like your muscles. That's you. And like I'm like, your muscles. oh my God, John, you have so many friends. Then you're in TikTok with gym friends. Like what? I don't have any gym friends. Start going to the gym and no, stop using the Peloton. I do go to the gym. I you just like put my headphones and I don't blinders. Alex has like three different gym memberships and she just uses the Peloton. I like that they yell at me. So yeah, my ick is just that you're a liar and you actually have all of the friends. I, they're acquaintances, but they're nice people. You really deep down, I think you love people. I don't know. I think I'm just a walking contradiction. I don't know. You so, are. I'm just an ambivert. Or wait, ambivert. S- isn't everyone? I guess so. Like, who's not? You know? Like, I, I'm an extrovert, but I also need my me time. Kind of. You literally were just on the phone with three different people for like three okay. hours that before. That was one day during the week. Like I never, you call people all day long, every single day. Mom, 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 what's going on? <laughs> boop, boop, boop. That's you. Not yeah, me. I, yeah, I'm calling. And I'm like this. 
First off, you're talking to your friends. In I'm talking dungeon. to health insurance, and they're like, my colonoscopy is twelve thousand dollars. I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, what? You're still talking to people. To us. Side note. Make sure your insurance covers your colonoscopy. So we're going to end it on that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh my gosh, guys, please give us five-star reviews. You're supposed to say that in the beginning. I know. Well, we love some reviews from you guys. We love the feedback, but only five stars. And tell us what you're loving. Like, subscribe, email, email, comment. You could find us at Give It To Me Straight Podcast on Instagram. Give It To Me Straight on TikTok. Give It To Me Straight Podcast on YouTube. And you could reach us at hello at give it to me straight podcast.com. And we will see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.